But the problem with vinegar is that vinegar has the property that allows them to penetrate the plastic, certain plastic housings on certain pump and causing the uh, magnet to rust. Hey, what's up Reefer? So for the longest time, I've been talking about this 20 gallon mangrove tank, but never actually showed you. The 20 gallon mangrove tank is actually located at the corner of the kitchen. It's kind of weird because this 20 gallon tank, well, I keep calling it 20 gallon. I think it's actually 17.1 gallon Aquamax. Um, but this tank actually came to be really haphazardly. I've had this tank just kind of chilling in the in the basement. I got the storage room and it's just sitting on a shelf. And the whole intention was to set it up as a planted tank. As some of you guys know, I had like a 9.1 to 9.7 gallon Aquamax tank before. Really love planted tank. Wanted something a little bit taller for a more interesting scape. So I waited for quite a while before Marine Depot finally have these tanks back in stock. Immediately jumped on it, half in the storage, never had a chance to set it up because Wait, this so kind of came around. You bought it and you didn't even know what to use it. Yeah, I bought it with the intention of setting up as a planted tank, right? Because I really enjoyed the s smaller tank over there you before. You had one at that time already. I had one at that time already. So I bought another one. I was gonna upgrade. To I was gonna, no, 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 I was gonna upgrade. To I was gonna upgrade. I was gonna upgrade. Same size. No, 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 this is much bigger. This is like twice the size. But then of course, little Leon came about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so never had time to He's use it. And this tank had just been sitting on the shelf. Fast forward a little bit, about half a year later. As some of you guys know, I've been wanting a mangrove for the longest time. I've had no luck with them. I've got, I've bought little pots of like two leaves and eventually they all just kind of rot, the leaves falls off and that's it. So there was this tank book now, locally. Flashback. Hey, what's up Reefer? So there's one thing that I've been trying to find for a reef tank for a long, long time. In fact, probably about two or three years now. Yesterday, I saw that somebody locally is selling a two foot tall mangrove tree. So I immediately went and picked it up, especially since the price was right. So here it is. The thing I had been hunting for for the last two slash three years. I'm kind of nervous because I understand that mangrove, once they sprouted, they pretty much acclimated to that tank environment and there's a little bit more touch and go in terms of transplanting them. So I'll be really careful. The good thing is that the uh, the previous owner, Raj, thank you so much, have also provided some of the uh, substrate that the mangrove tree grew out of. So I'm gonna find a tank and kind of settle the tree in. I am a little bit torn. Uh, initially, I kind of want to have it almost as fresh water because I understand that it can do fresh water, salt water, or brackish water. Um, but since this plant was grown in a salt water environment, a full blown reef, um, I guess I will probably stick to a reef tank. And the reason I want to do fresh water is because it's simpler if I do want to do water changes and stuff like that versus a reef tank. But again, since this was growing in a reef environment, let's go ahead and do that. One hour later. Hey guys, so a while back there was this story circulating around. Basically a husband sent the wife and kids off to a one week vacation. When they got back, he put in this huge aquarium, but by then it's too late, aquarium's in the house. So Emily went out to a EDM concert yesterday and she's still in bed. I always found that story to be inspiring. As a result, <laughs> Emily's gonna kill me. I have this spare 20 gallon Aqua Max tank. Uh, it is rimless and is brand new. The idea was to use this as a freshwater planted tank, but of course, since Leon is here now, do not have time for a freshwater tank. What's the next best thing? Mangrove tank. My main concern right now is staying alive when Emily wakes up and see this. So maybe I can do something like this, I think. End of flashback. So in the past, I never had really good luck with mangrove because I feel like I never really given them the appropriate care and respect that they deserve. It's almost always like an afterthought. I just kind of jam in some and call it a day. So this time, I want to set up a system specifically for this mangrove. And in come this tank right here. So really quickly, I put the tank together. I throw some sand I got. I think these are Tropic Eden sand. These are the mini flakes. I toss some live rock in there and just started cycling this tank. Also pumping some of these like freshwater liquid fertilizer that I've had laying around. This is five plus for when I had the high tech planted curium. Uh, so I did all those. Mangrove did really well. 
leaves started growing, I started seeing new leaves. At this point, you see that this tank is actually quite filled and all of these things are actually from the 45 gallon tank. But you know what? The tank is awfully dirty. Tank has been up for about three or four months at this point. I have not scraped the glass once because for the longest time, this is just kind of like a temporary holding tank as I was trying to figure out what to do with it. Now it's really, really dirty. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna explain what the heck is going on with all these lights and what I've learned so far when it comes to maintaining this mangrove because this time I really put in 100% effort versus like a haphazard toss into some kind of deal. Wait, where is that light from? What light? This guy right here? Yeah. Where uh, did you switch it? Oh man. <laughs> so so in the past it was only when is only mangrove and like a test core of a zinnia. I only have one light. I only have one light, the UFO. Exactly. She know what it is already. This is actually Aqua Knight A030. Uh, this is a newer version of the light I was using um, upstairs on my 10 gallon budget and old reef. I saw that there's a newer version, so I bought it, wanted to try because I want to start carrying this light and selling it on Amazon or just yeah. as a distributor. Um, started talking to the manufacturer. <laughs> I think we're going somewhere, but kind of somewhere along the line, we're just kind of like uh, not talking as much anymore. So at some point I want to pick up this again. The issue was the stand. Um, it was not as graceful as the A029 and it doesn't get as close to the water surface. However, again, this is a tangent. Let me go ahead and clean up this tank and then I'm gonna give you guys a proper shakedown. Oh, by the way, you may be wondering, how come I don't scrape the glass? It's actually for that guy right there. That is a that size fighting Kong that was intended for the 150, which never happened. So, it's yeah, just kind of chilling here. I feed it um, nori once in a while, but I leave the side glass uh, not scraped too, so you can kind of pick the uh, slime and the algae off of it to eat. Uh, anyways, all right, let me clean this up and we'll chat. The next morning. All right, guys, welcome to the morning. I'm gonna do some um, quick work on the 20 gallon tank before going to work. First order of business, scraping glass. One tool I really, really like is the razor blade. And obviously this one is starting to rust. I'll be replacing it soon. But I got this nice little handle from Home Depot. Just make it a little bit easier to grab. And just look at how dirty this glass is, man. These are all like algae buildup from since the beginning. I've never scraped the glass, just no need to because I'm not looking at it anyways. It's pretty much a holding tank. But now that it's a little bit more established, let's clean it up and see how it looks. And it seems like the conch is not really reaching up here anyways. So I can safely scrape these guys out. And there's more than enough algae for the snails and hermit. I'll be careful when I get to the edge. I don't want to damage the silicone. And I'm doing this right before water change. So when I do water change, I can actually pull out all the scrape off the algae. So it does not just stay in the system. I figured this is a nice way for nutrient export as well. Similar to a refugium, at least that's what I think. Um, the algae soaks up all the um, excess nutrient in the water and I when I um, do a water change and get them out of the system is export. All right so here's out a bit of the puzzle. Um, here is the power head that I noticed is getting weaker and weaker and it's probably due to all the stuff that's clogged up. So once in a while what I do is give it a um, citric acid bath. Citric acid is something that I've switched to pretty recently. I've been using like vinegar, sometimes full strength vinegar for a really short shlok or 50-50 vinegar. But the problem with vinegar is that vinegar has the property that allows them to penetrate the plastic, certain plastic housings on certain pump and causing the uh, magnet to rust and swell. Uh, I've had multiple uh, MP10 and MP40 wet side fail because of this. Um, the wet side, the, the propeller would not spin. Upon closer inspection, it is a magnet that rusted and busted open the housing, uh, causing it to get stuck. And it is due to vinegar, it's straight up vinegar. If you do a search on reef to reef, uh, you'll find a thread talking exactly this. Two alternatives that people seem to like is number one, muric acid, and number two, citric acid. Muric acid is really, really strong. People say soak it for a couple minutes and pull it right out. Um, but it's also really not forgiving and it's kind of dangerous as well um, to people and you want to do it outside and you won't, don't want to get on your skin or clothes. The second option is citric acid. Citric acid is much safer. Uh, you, can, you can just leave your pump in there even running for hours and it'll be okay but eventually it'll kind of get all the crud off and stuff like that. So for easy stuff like this, I just let it soak and um, possibly plug it in to run it a little bit uh, to make sure it gets through all the propeller and stuff like that. It's gonna make a mess, so I'll put it down here and run. Um, but for tougher stuff, I may soak it and then use a toothbrush to brush things off and we should 
get some of the power back from this power head. But regardless, this power head is a little bit low in terms of flow for the tank that I have, so I may switch it out a little bit later. But for now, this will have to do. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, not that bad. Yeah, I like running it a little bit. Um, just to make sure the uh, citric acid water gets to all the nooks and crannies. I probably need to. Yeah, I probably need to let it soak longer and probably getting a brush to go through the uh, these right here. Get these currents out. All right, guys. So I got the salt water mix. I'm using the Tropic Marin Pro Salt these days. They have three different lines. They have the regular, the Pro, and the uh, Bioactive. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I use Pro Salt because uh, I could use my hand checker, the conductive ones, to uh, do salinity tests. One interesting bit about the pro, uh, bioactive salt is that if I use a checker that's conductive, right, uh, it's actually slightly off. I think it's about 10% lower, simply because it does not detect um, the bioactive stuff. So basically if I use a refractometer, like the ones that you hold up to the eyes or the one that you, is like a tabletop from Milwaukee or Hannah, you put some water in it, that will be accurate. But if I use like conductive um, testing, it may be slightly off. It may be slightly off. I think it probably sets on the container itself as well. But be sure to be aware of that if you're using bioactive salts. Simply because some of the property in there is not detectable by uh, conductive uh, salinity testing. Uh, so just for ease of use, I use the Pro Reef. I use this because the naturally mixed parameter is really close to what I want to hit uh, when it comes to just maintaining reef tank. I think it's like a DKH of roughly 8 or 8.5 or something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head, but close enough. So water is a little cold. Um, ideally, I should stick a heater in there and warm it up and let it circulate for maybe two, three, four hours. Uh, just to make sure the salt water is mixed properly. But um, <laughs> for years, I've just been letting it sit for maybe like 20, 30 minutes and just kind of stir it once in a while and just kind of dump them in the tank. It's been working for me. I think there's a case of don't do what I do uh, simply because it works, it's not ideal. Uh, the next thing I have in my hand is a colander. This is a foldable silicone one. That's really cheap, couple bucks on Amazon. If you're interested, um, I'll drop a link. This will help me put the water in the tank. It actually fits nicely this way as well. I've tried the corner one, it doesn't really hold and this one seems to work best with a handle. It works really well with this 17.1 um, gallon as well as a, the 10 gallon tank. I got this idea from George Farmer um, the Planted Aquarium Guru. He has a red calendar that is, is really famous for. But just look at this. The reason I like it, again, is it doesn't really disturb the sand bed because the calendar really breaks up the, um, the downward force of the water. Well, it kind of dist distributes it evenly so that it's not as crazy. Once again, I just want to reiterate, uh, ideally, you want to mix the salt water, let it sit for a couple hours with a power head running and I have a heater in there to get them up to the proper temperature. Um, <laughs> there's a reason why I'm calling the appropriate reefer for years. I've just been doing it freshly salt mix, mix them as good as I could. Um, let it sit for maybe like, well actually these are room temp water. But I'll let the, I'll still let the salt water mix for maybe like 15, 20 minutes. And then I just kind of dump them in. Been working out. Not the best way, not the best way, but in terms of time and whatnot, it just works for me. The next day. All right, guys, here it is. The 17.1 gallon mangrove tank clean for the very first time since cycling the tank. Let's take a little closer look. Ooh, can you hear the baby crying upstairs? Emily's taking care of him. What a great mom. So first order of business, obviously besides cleaning the glass, uh, the power head is clean. I also moved it a little bit higher up so that I get some flow on the water surface because I was getting, getting a little oil slick um, every week. This way hopefully we'll keep the surface agitated and uh, keep the oil from forming and hopefully this will promote the gas exchange rate as well. There's a rosewood of anemone in its um, classic position which is hanging upside down in a crevice. There's actually a bristol worm hanging out there right now too, kind of swaying around a little bit. But look at that, oh look, the porcelain crab's hungry. You got a little feeder sticking out. It's kind of hard to see right here. But you see a lot of familiar corals here. Even though the light is a little bit more blue compared to how I normally have it. So the coral do not fluorescent in as much. Uh, but you recognize stuff like Xenia, which is pulsing here. We got this awesome, I think it's called like Forest Fire Redactus. That's the official name, but I've been calling this psychedelic broccoli uh, because like I read it once in uh, Washington Post. The author described corals as like psychedelic broccoli, so I really like it, so I've been calling it that. Uh, coming over here, we got all these uh, green tree letters I really like, and we got that potato chip 
uh, SPS right there seems to be doing well even though it's under uh, uh, Aqua Knight and a whole new tank. Zoas I kept a few in this tank as well, but usually it's the chunkier Conley that wouldn't fit in other tank. Same thing with the Gorgonian, you see some of these are remnants of the LG I scraped off. I just kind of like, I guess got caught in Gorgonian. Thing's been happy, I mean, this these corals have been in this tank for at least uh, four weeks now, five weeks, so they pretty much adjust it. Um, the only thing that's really not that happy in this tank are the frog spawns. Initially they look great, and then they started cl uh, closing up like this. So there's something missing in this tank. There's something missing in this tank that the frog spawn likes. So I'm slowly tweaking it. I thought about moving the frog spawn to the tank gallon tank because obviously it works in the tank gallon tank. But um, on second second thought, I kind of decided to keep it here as an indicator coral. If things started really go south. I think I'll see them in the frog spawn first. So I'm just kind of keeping them there for that purpose. So in terms of corals, I'm just keeping like the hot air corals in this tank because obviously if I stand up, the tank is just kind of on the ground. Honestly, it really is just a holding tank until I figure out what to do with um, the corals as well as the mangrove. Let's really quickly talk about equipment, but for that, let me go ahead and turn on this light. Zit light's UI is kind of funky, um, but it works, they're nice lights. I really like uh, the way they designed the fixture. Let me see if I can take off the orange filter. Sort of, okay. Because of me, your that. life is wonderful. All right, so um, hopefully the light looks a little bit more natural now to you guys. You may be wondering, why is there two lights? Uh, so initially that light is not there. That's Aqua Knight A030 and that is the Z-Light UFO. Um, so like I mentioned before, a couple months back, I came across somebody selling the uh, mangrove tree, which you can see a lot better in this light. And I really want to get it. Did not have a tank for it. So really quickly, I just kind of set up this temporary tank to hold just the mangrove tree. So got the mangrove tree, and then I figured I need a light for it. And at that time, I have this light, the Z-Light UFO. I really like this light, especially the form factor. Um, it's a little overkill. Well, it's actually a lot of overkill to use this over the, uh, just for just for plants. But I have this plant handy on the shelf, not being used, and it, it's, it hangs up really clean. Set up a channel, set up the internal timer. Uh, basically, it's running all white and all red. Maybe a tiny bit of blue, um, but not that much. I really used this just for the mangrove tree. I tweaked this light a little bit too because like initially I had this light a little bit low and then I noticed that the leaves, the leaves on the mangrove tree started curling down like this. I immediately looked it up online. That means that uh, it's probably getting a little bit too much light. So I raised it, also turned down the power um, quite a bit. This is actually a really potent light. In the course of two or three days, the leaves straighten out again and looks good. Leaves comes in pairs. I think since then I've had like these are new and these are new. So things are going well with the mangrove tree. I was really holding my breath because red mangrove seems to have a reputation of being hard to transplant. Like if you sprout the mangrove, pot in a certain environment so under certain light if you move it it's uh kind of hit or miss it's a little bit tricky so i was really really holding my breath making sure it's okay i was doing stuff like um dozing like i mentioned before these uh fresh water plants uh liquid uh, nutrients thrive plus uh, i was also dumping in a little bit of iron right figure plants can use it and i was keeping an eye out on the level of magnesium because um as people tell you if they have mangrove tree in their reef system usually they'll start pulling magnesium out from the water as well so i guess they they do uptake um magnesium another thing i made sure to do is to spray down the leaves even though technically for red mangrove trees you do not need to spray down the leaves when i say spray down i mean using like a um, fresh water spray bottle just go like this, just to make sure uh, everything is clear. Usually it's, um, I think it's black mangrove that excretes salts from the leaf. And that's how they're able to survive in salt water. This is full strength salt water. I believe red mangrove, they excrete it from the trunk, if I remember properly. Uh, however, it's, I feel like just nice for the plant to wet the leaves once in a while, in, just in case there's dust on there or something. So I, I still do it and the plant doesn't really mind. So that's okay. Technically red mangroves do not need to have the leaves wet 
I just enjoy it. Sorry, that's a huge tangent on taking care of a red mangrove tree. And honestly, I'm no expert. I'm just as new as you guys are. A lot of this information I found online, I experimented on this tree, I saw the reaction. I was like, I figured, okay, all right, well, that seems to work or that does not. So it is what it is. One last bit about red mangrove tree, supposedly they grow best in fresh water. Salt water is actually not the ideal environment to grow. So that's actually quite interesting. If you're only interested in red mangrove, maybe just grow them in fresh water. Now, moving on to the equipment on this tank. Like I mentioned before, we have the Zit Light UFO. I really like this light. It's like really cool form factor and it's definitely powerful enough for corals. I've had this over different tanks. Coming down here, I added this Aquanite A030 light pretty recently uh, since I started having corals down here. So you may be wondering, why don't I just turn up this light? That's because remember, I raised that light and lowered that light because it was too much light for the mangrove tree. So I figured, you know what? I have an extra light in the basement uh, on the shelf. Let me just set it up as well. So I set it up on this side of the tank, pretty much pointed, pointed it right above the corals. For equipment, I do have a high door um, power head. I think it's one of the smallest one or the nano one. That's why it's not pushing a ton of water, but for now it will do. Later on, once I shut down the 45 gallon tank, I'll free up a MP10, which I may install here, which I think is a more appropriate pump for a uh, tank length of this size. In terms of heater, I got a Phoenix 100 watts heater. Um, I feel like it's sufficient. It's sitting right next to a window and it's winter right now. So sometimes I think the tank goes through a little temperature swing, but for the most part, it stays around like 76, 77. My, I set it to 80. So it's, uh, I think it's kind of like a struggle to keep up the temperature. Now, if you ask me what is one of the most important equipment besides lights and uh, heater, I would say it's a auto top off system. And here's what we got. We got a XP Aqua Pro here, the Duato ATO. Uh, big fan of this ATO system. I have it hooked up temporarily to this uh, K-more. This is a five liter jug. I was actually gonna use this to dose calc wassers uh, in the 45, but never got around to it. But this container is really cool because it actually comes with a, a probe that you can hook up to different things to give alert when the solution is low. So I hope to do more with this container down the road, but for now it is the ATO jug. And honestly, equipment wise, that's pretty much it. This is a really, really simple tank setup, similar to my friend Joseph's, uh, and also similar to some of the tanks I've set up in the past. No filtration, well, no external filtration. I do have a lot of uh, rocks and I also have some marine pure spheres you can kind of see in the back that I moved from the 45, hoping to create some biological filtration area um, in this tank for bacteria to colonize and help break down the ammonia nitrites. And in terms of maintenance, I do water change every week and there's no there's no getting around it with a small tank like this. I just see oil sticks up building up over the surface every week. And by the end of the week, usually there's a thin slick across the top and I'll do a water change then. It's actually a good timer, it's a good reminder for me to do water change as well. But even with the oil slick, everything still looks really good, really healthy. Again, except for the frog spawn, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there. Livestock wise, we have por the porcelain crab, we call him Chairman Bao. We got a fighting cock that is way too big for this tank. And we got, I think two snails. One, one is the Troka snails and then one is the Margarita snails and that's pretty much it. I plan to move the two clowns from the 45 into this tank um, until the big tank is ready. Uh, so I mentioned many times, the file fish is going to my Reef Sensei gyms um, and also the uh, Silver Belly Rest is going over to one of our local reefers as well. So they're all kind of uh, spoken for. I just got to start making the move. And guys, that's pretty much it. This is the 17.1 gallon mangrove tank. It is supposed to be a super simple tank and I'm hoping that in the future, the mangrove can kind of help with the filtration a little bit. From what I read online, I don't think the mangrove is actually too efficient in terms of a nutrient export. That's why a lot of people still use this macroalgae. So mangrove for the most part is pretty much just for looks. But then again, I'm sure it'll help in um, some way. And depending on how the mangrove tree grow, I may keep the system up and running or I may move the mangrove tree into the 135 gallon as part of scape. I'm not sure yet. A lot of reefers, including myself, have tried mangrove many times and not had much luck. So one of these days, I would love to talk to somebody who've had great success uh, with keeping mangrove tree and just really pick their brain on best practices and just understand what their needs and wants. Have you guys ever tried a red mangrove in a reef tank or refugium? What has your experience been like? Or do you have any tips for me? If so, please leave a comment. I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12 30 Bye.
after like half an hour, she put this together. It looked exactly the same. That's how I left yeah, it. Same. It looked exactly no, the same. same. She took it apart, put it together, and it looked exactly the same. And it's then she has the this. Okay. It's parallel. Now. She has it. 